Hello friends and foes of Middle Earth and welcome back. Today we will break down the main trailer, talk about Simon Tolkien and have a look at the posters for each character. So let's just start with the trailer. This is the first shot we see and I'm pretty sure this is Numenor. It looks very inspired by Greek and Roman architecture. I think overall it looks fine. I think it's a bit too much with all the statues but I think it's acceptable so a personal positive. And next we have Finrod, I suppose, in Valinor, looking at the two trees. This is also the scene that we was first shown in the first image long, long ago. I think it looks great, and I really like the two trees. But I've already given points for that, so... And then we have some elves, I suppose, wandering somewhere in Middle-earth. And then we have this, the elves again, but this time on top of a mountain chain. There's one very cool detail here that I haven't seen a lot of people point out. But the elves are actually walking on top of snow and not making any footprints. So that deserves a little point. That is accurate and we also see that in the Lord of the Rings with Legolas. And then we have what I suppose is Linden. It looks very much like some of the other images we have seen from this location. I don't hope these trees are meant to be Malon trees or Melian as they are called in plural. But I don't think they are. But it would be a negative law score if these are supposed to be Million, but for now I will not give a point for it. And we have Casa Doom. I think it looks pretty good. Of course, very CGI heavy, but overall I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, interesting to see that they have an underwater river, and also how they are using mirrors to light up the mines. Very cool and very interesting. I think it deserves a personal positive. And then we have some random village of humans, apparently. I'm not sure where this is meant to be. Can't really say if it's good or bad. So let's just move on. And then we have the Harfords. And once again, we have the Antler Boys. Yeah, these two terrible guys. We'll talk a bit more about the Harfords at the end of the video as the song that is playing is actually referring to some lore, but there's an issue with it. So the Harfords are described in this show at least as a nomadic people, but also farmers. That doesn't really make sense, does it? I'll give a personal negative because I don't feel it made logical sense. And we see a lot of the images we've already seen. And we see Galadriel with, I guess, Finrod. It does look like a different character, but maybe this is her brother. I think it's another elf, but I'm not sure who. But those swords, God, I hate them. They look so bad. And we have Elron. And I guess we have what would be represent the flight of the Noldor crossing the Hilkaraxe. Um I think that's a cool reference, so I'll give a personal positive at least. But uh, if it had to be lore accurate, there would be far more elves than this. And we don't really know if this is meant to be that, so I can't really give a, a law school for it yet. And then we have this city. Many have guessed that this might be somewhere in Numenor. But from what I could read online, this might actually be Austin Ethel, the capital of Eregion. I do feel they should have used some of the designs by Alan Lee that was made for The Lord of the Rings. But overall, I think the city looks pretty good. So I'll give a personal positive at least. And we have a conversation between Galadriel and Elrond. I feel it's just a really weird and awkward uh, conversation between them. So. Yeah, we will talk more about some of the dialogue at the end. And we have Galadriel again. No more comments for this. And then we have this. Could this be a flashback or perhaps a flash forward? Well, it's possible. I've heard some people thinking that this might be the first Kinsling. Would be interesting at least. Uh, others have talked about that this might be um, Galadriel actually seeing the downfall of Numenor. I think it looks interesting, so we'll give it a personal positive, but I'm not sure if there's any law behind this. I guess we'll have to wait and see. And we have a ship sailing away from Numenor, I guess. Not much to say here. Looks alright, a bit weird, but could be worse. And we have this shot again. I don't have anything more to add to it. I still think the city looks fine. And we have this shot again that we also talked about in the last episode. Then we have the orcs marching, and I guess that's Adar at the front, and some other human right next to him. 
We can actually recognize some of these orcs from the images we have seen already. And this shot again, a lot of stuff here that we already have seen. And we have these white leaves flying in the air. We will talk more about that in the next trailer. And then we have Eleanor and Poppy Proudfoot likely looking at the meteor man that has just arrived. I'm not a fan of the Harfords. Everyone visiting Casa Doom. This could have happened, but there's nothing in the lore that actually says that everyone visited Casa Doom. I think the armor is interesting, but yeah, I'm not too impressed. And then again, we have Casa Doom. I think this image is a bit better than the other one we saw, but uh, I have to point one thing out though. It doesn't really make sense to have all this green underground because it would need sunlight and sure some of it would come into Casa Doom, but I don't think there's enough sunlight to actually have this much green. But that's just my opinion. I won't give points for it though, I just want to point it out. And for the first time we have Durin III, the king of Casa Doom. He looks fine, uh, quite good looking for a dwarf. I'm not a fan of the crown though, but he looks good at least, but I won't really give a point for that. And then we see the rock smashing again. And this character, the new elf, perhaps some new character that is at least part of the company that tries to cross the Hilkaraxi. Then we have Halbrand in Numenor. And then we have Arondir. Nothing interesting, really. And then we have this shot. Gladriel leading the Numenorian army of cavalry. I've already given negative points for pretty much all of this. The only new thing here is actually we can see Halbrand is with her. Oh, and there's a female. And then Galadriel and Halbrand on a raft, just like we talked about in the last episode. We will talk more about it in the next trailer as well. A Numenorean ship and Isildur, nothing new to say really. Then we have Galadriel and Elendil. I'm not sure where they are meant to be riding to, but there are two locations on Numenor that could be this location, so it's going to be interesting if it's one of those, but I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure that is where they will find all the scrolls they are looking for, but we will also talk more about that later in the video. Elendil again. I actually forgot something in the last part. Elendil is actually quite tall, between 2 meters and 13 and 2 meters and 41, depending what sort you're looking at. I don't think the actor needs to be that height, as long as he looks taller than most at least. After all, Elendil was actually known as Elendil the Tall. I think the actor overall looks pretty tall, so let's just be kind and give a low point for that at least. And then we have the crowd cheering towards Farason. Some look happy, some look very angry. I spotted this in the crowd, apparently Muriel, I guess, and some really angry man right next to her. And over here we also have the daughter of Elendil, Erien. I think we should try something funny here. How many blonde people can you actually spot? Well, not a lot. And as you might know, the Edain were made out of three houses and one of them was the House of Hador. And they were known for having blonde hair. The Nomenorians should have at least a lot of blonde haired people. And still I see pretty much no one here with blonde hair. So I have to give a negative law score just for that. And then we have Halbrand on horseback. His armor looks interesting, at least better than most of the stuff we have seen. But at this point I think they need to do some more to impress me. So, no points. Then we have Durin the Fourth with, I guess, Mithril. It's really hard to see, but let's assume it is Mithril. That makes sense at least, so I'll give a low point for that at least. And then we have this, which looks like the Oath of Feanor. It will be interesting to see. I'm not sure if these are the Sons of Feanor. I guess it was. I really want more evidence before I give points for it, so let's wait with it. And we have a Rondir fighting a walk, I guess, or at least uh, a similar sort of creature. Nothing interesting to see, really. And then the Ice Troll again, getting killed by Galadriel, I guess. And the Meteor Man. Many have pointed out that this sort of looks like the Eye of Sauron, at least for a second. Uh, feels a bit far-fetched to me, but a lot of people have been thinking that this is Sauron, so if that is true, I guess it makes sense at least. Uh, won't give any points for it, though. And then in this last shot, we have the Harfords wandering around. And if we listen to the song, they sing about the wandering days of the Hobbits. And uh, that is indeed law accurate, but at the wrong time in history. You see, uh, I've actually talked a bit about this in the second part of the Fall of Arnold series. So feel free to check that out later. 
But the wandering days of the hobbits started around 1050 in the third age. So they are off by more than a thousand years at least. And if you want to know more about it, I can only recommend you to watch the second episode about the fall of Arnor. I will give a negative law score for this because it is a bit of law they have tried to use, but it's used in the wrong way. And let's talk a bit about the dialogue overall. It feels very much like the message they're trying to send is that the old era of Tolkien is dead. I know many other people uh, feel the same way after hearing the dialogue, so, so I'll give a personal negative for that at least. I do get this sort of feeling that Galadriel will be the only wise character in the show and she will just be teaching all the men that they're fools and should listen to her, but time will really tell what this is all about. So far, I don't feel the trailers or teasers give us a clue about what the actual story will be in this series. Let's move on to the article about Simon Tolkien working as a consultant for the Rings of Power. If you're not familiar with Simon Tolkien, he's the grandson of J.R.R. Tolkien and the son of Christopher Tolkien. For years, his father and him wasn't talking to each other because of disagreements about Tolkien's works. And I want to show you a clip that gives us a pretty good idea why and what his stance is towards the law, and why he is likely working on the rings of power. And my problem with the films was really that uh, I think Jackson was kind of too faithful to the book. He kind of put too much into it, and so there was too much going on. I would have liked more character, and perhaps... Certain content creators think that being related to J.R.R. Tolkien automatically makes you a Tolkien expert, which is of course absolutely ridiculous. We also get this interesting image from the article. Here we have Galadriel and Elendil in a library with a ton of scrolls. I'm fairly confident that this is the location we saw them ride towards in the main trailer. The sword is not that interesting, but oh, look at that lamp. I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. I'm just kidding. I won't give more points for the lamp designs. I noticed the sigil of Earendil. That's a very neat detail to include and, of course, law accurate, as the design was made by Tolkien himself. So, a law point for that. We also have this image with Durin IV. I don't know why, but he looks sort of ridiculous here. Maybe it's because of the door behind him? I don't know, but no points. And then this image. It screams of diversity. What in the hell's diversity? I said in the last episode that Muriel should be holding the scepter of Numenor if she is indeed the Green Regent. But so far there's no evidence that the scepter will even be featured. So I'll give a negative law score for now. We also have some images from the Comic Con magazine. I apologize for the low quality. Credit to Fellowship of Fans and Barking for sharing these on Twitter. We have the dwarves practicing their religion. I'm not sure where they will go with this. I fear the worst, but I think it deserves a low point for at least giving it a shot. It's something that was completely left out from the Hobbit trilogy and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We also have Gilgalad, Elrond and Galadriel. Not much to say, except that Galadriel looks more like she's supposed to here. We also have Calibribor with his hammer here. Looks a bit like the one we know from Shadow of War. I'm not too impressed, nor do I know if it even makes sense to have a hammer. As someone pointed out in the comments, rings are actually molded and not forged like you would do with a sword. And Harfords. Yeah, not too impressive. Let's end by looking at all the posters released recently. We'll only talk briefly about those that are interesting to talk about, so... Adar. The made-up character that is supposedly Galadriel's brother. I think that is slightly more confirmed now, as we can see the star symbol on his armor here as well. Kilabrimbor in another terrible costume. Erien, Elendil's daughter. I think her dress looks quite fine here, and the glass as well. Let's be kind and give a personal positive. Elendil, I think his armor has some interesting imagery on it, but no points. Halbrand again. I'm curious what they will do with his character and if he is indeed Sauron in disguise. And Kemen, Parasan's made-up son. For some reason he looks like a pushover to me, so it will be interesting to see what role he will play in the story, though I'm not very interested in him. More Halfords, still incredibly boring. Parasan, the chest plate is a bit meh, but let's move on. Still a terrible helmet design, if you ask me. I won't give another negative though. Theo who looks like a young cosplayer in this shot. And Jesus. No, Moses. Oh, no, it's just a stranger. Or as fans know him, meet your man. I really don't hope this is meant to be a young Gandalf, as some people have started to speculate. 
time will tell, but please, no, please. Once again, we have come to the end of an episode. Thank you all for watching and for sticking around on the channel. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Farewell till next time.